Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard once again. Today we have a box from new B drone and inside here is the VR drone 2.5 and actually it is a drone for beginners. Let's open this box and see what's inside. A very nicely made carrying pouch for the drone itself. And boom, you got your goggles, your radio and an accessory pouch, which I like the way it opens. In the accessory pouch, you got your usual manual, golden prop removal tool, USB-C cable, SD and micro SD card reader, both USB-C and USB-A, four extra ASI three blades for the tiny whoop and the actual goggles antenna. Time to take out the radio, the goggles, and as you may notice, there is no drone. And this is the coolest part about this kit. If you look for the drone, just open the goggles and boom. <laughs> the drone is stored inside the goggles together with the batteries. You have a lot of spaces and the charger itself. It's just crazy. And this becomes a portable monitor and the drone just fell off and of course this part has to be removed in order to fly and you have access to the fresnel lens i put the antenna on let's wear them and they are fine soft enough they don't pinch on my nose the light leakage is uh, not too much on my face the only thing is maybe they are a little bit narrow on the sides but it's fine with the fresnel lens the screen looks kind of big it's a little bit distorted like fish eye but no problem at all if you undo the strap you can completely remove the screen from the body just like this the screen is 4.3 inches these are the buttons with this one you keep it pressed you turn it on and then if you one press it it will record this is for auto search of channels this one is for your uh, analog settings basically so contrast the usual and then you have uh, band up and channel up basically on this side you have a USB-C for charging, very nice to see USB-C and on the other you have a V-out if you want to connect it to a monitor and an integrated SD card slot with a 32 GB complementary SD card Talking about the radio, it's incredibly tiny, I like this form factor actually, I wish there were professional ones this tiny especially for me that I use thumbs, super comfy and goes in the backpack incredibly well the sticks are made of plastic, they are kind of removable the tips but you don't need to do that and it's all made of plastic basically there is no screen you turn it on with this button it has a lot of LEDs momentary switches three-way switch two-way switch the stick feel is actually fine for of course a plastic radio and also it has a USB-C port as well that's used for charging and also for connecting to a PC and use it for a simulator and finally let's talk about the drone itself it's a tiny whoop as you can see 65 millimeter motor to motor 19 grams of weight incredibly light I love the way they made the canopy this is the battery holder super light and also seems quite resistant to crashes if you break it you have a limited warranty you just have to pay for shipping you have a fixed angle analog camera so you will not be able to modify the angle but it seems to be soft mounted VTX antenna and the RX antenna the motors are brushed but new bidron says they are very very durable but still very affordable and easy to change if you break them and finally it's time to fly the drone let's take the 250 milliamps 1s battery and slot it bam into the back super easy plug it in and the drone is on it doesn't make noise because it's brushed if you go pitch up and rudder left boom you have access to the osd settings you can change parameters such as the vtx but not the power because it's limited to 25 milliwatts which is not a lot but hey it's beginner drone and a tiny whoop so you're supposed to fly indoors with this and then you can change the PIDs but it's not recommended the rates if you don't find yourself at home with the, the sticks and if you mess up you can reset to factory settings and it goes back to the original PIDs and rates you find when it ships to you your three button switch changes air to horizon to level mode and this one is your uh, toggle motors on and off let's start flying boom we are in level mode now so the the drone doesn't go you see i push forward but the drone doesn't go uh, that doesn't flip basically whoa then you have horizon mode 
which keeps the horizon but it allows the drone to flip wow oh my god Ooh. wow i didn't expect it to flip this fast no, come on Come on, come on, I got it. Let's have another go at it. There is a little bit of breeze, so this drone is not made for that. But as you can hear, it's incredibly, incredibly silent. Again, it's 19 grams, so it's obvious that, boom. Very controllable, there is a little bit of drift again. Maybe it's the wind, maybe it's the brushless motors, I have not. Oh my god, I've not flown with a brushed motor drone in a while. I started out with a drone like this, modified to have a, a VTX and a camera on top. So this brings me back to when I started flying. And yeah, it's a nice way to, to start flying, especially indoors. Again, this is, in my opinion, an indoor-only drone. You're gonna have a much better time indoors, much more controllable and uh, yeah it's not hard because of the drone but it's, it's hard because of the analog which is uh, yeah it leaves a little bit to be desired 25 milliwatts is not a lot and this is the level mode let's go horizon mode and as i was saying before it allows to flip the drone is not very powerful this is max throttle <laughs> It's not very powerful, so don't expect to be doing some crazy acro with it. And then in air mode, okay, this is more similar to, to what you do in manual mode. You have to, to adjust the throttle a little bit. I mean, I am a professional pilot, I'm having a little bit of hard time outdoors. So if there is a little bit of breeze, don't fly this drone. It's like flying a leaf. It's, uh, Actually, I'm gonna move indoors. I'm gonna move indoors. And boom, now we are indoors. And here, it's much easier to fly. Man, this reminds me of the old days. And I can talk over the drone flying indoors because it's so, so silent. Let's put, I like using level mode indoors. People are gonna hate me, but I feel like it's, it's easier to fly. And I see people starting to learn FPV like this and starting to go through stuff. Mm, okay. And that was the fun for me at the beginning. Just, uh, oh my God, going under the chairs and uh, this is how I learn. Boom. Of course, you're gonna be wanting to upgrade it after a while because uh, you, you want to start doing flips and stuff outdoors. And 25 milliwatts is fine indoor for uh, 50 meter indoor. As soon as you start going, you see, the signal starts dropping a little bit. Let's try doing this. Uh, no! <laughs> Let's try again. Come on! Yeah. Okay, uh, come on. If I go slower, I will be able to do, to do it. I mean, the, um, the screen quality is not super bad. It's just the 25 milliwatts VTX that's a little bit uh, a, a shame. But on these drones, it's very hard to see something more than 25 milliwatts. Tiny whoops are very small, very low power, 1S, and that's the spirit. I didn't remember there was a camera there. What I started with was much, much worse. It was a toy drone, and I basically strapped a camera on it. The battery lasted 40 seconds, one minute probably. This seems to last quite a while, I have to say. You're gonna be able to do three, four, five minutes this will be nice for kids or for, okay, 3.0. It should have a smart battery management system. And basically, I guess this is this one. It just drops when the battery 
drops, it limits your throttle. And that's it, you don't destroy the battery, you go recover the drone. Time for my final opinion on the new B-Drone VR 2.5 beginner kit. I mean, for 150 bucks, you get the complete package. The drone, the goggles, the radio, and four batteries. It's one of the cheapest entries you will find into FPV out there, because for sure it's packed, it's full of toys like 20 bucks tiny whoops without the cameras. They're fun, but they're 20 bucks, it's not FPV. Then there are drones with Wi-Fi cameras that have ton of latency, crappy quality, and you're not gonna be able to fly with the goggles. It's not a good experience. This doesn't want to be a toy. This wants to be a good way into FPV. It has all the core elements of FPV. So you have P tuning, you have uh, the real analog low latency experience, the radio, can connect to a simulator and I feel like this will make for an incredible present to someone that you were talking about wanting to try FPV. It's one of the most inexpensive ways that doesn't suck basically so very very recommended for that. And if you watching this video are considering buying one of these kits for yourself I have a few considerations to make because I always get asked by people what's the best way to start FPV and I suggest two routes. The first one is this, you spend as little as possible, maybe you're strapped on money, you don't want to spend too much, you just want a taste. This will give you a very good taste of the FPV experience and teach you a lot of lessons. Of course, the quality of the gear is beginner quality and it, it leaves a lot to be desired. The drone is underpowered, it's fine indoors, you're gonna have fun, but as soon as you master it, you, you'll be wanting more. And if you want more, you need to buy more. You need to buy a new radio, a new drone of course, and most probably a new set of goggles. So your 150 bucks investment is kind of lost to try. And if you lose the drone, well, you need to buy a new drone from this company or a new radio entirely because this radio works only with this drone for what I know. The goggles are analog and it's not really ideal. I don't suggest people starting with analog because you see, you go around the wall and this is 25 milliwatts, but even with more milliwatts, for, for beginners, it's, it's harder to learn analog, in my opinion. Also, the resell value, if you lose the drone, it's gone. You need to buy another drone and then resell it. And uh, the radio is worth nothing without the drone, and the goggles are worth probably 20, 30, 40 bucks maximum. So that's the issue. You, you're kind of losing on the investment to try spending as little as possible. The second route I usually recommend people is buying a used DJI Avata. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate in the comments, but hear me out. You spend a thousand bucks on that, you're gonna have a blast. That drone is super easy to fly at first, but can, can take you to a very good level because it can do manual flying, you can do tricks and flips. It's not amazing, but it can do it. You can fly indoors, outdoors, records HD video, you see HD footage in your goggles, it doesn't break up, you can fly out two kilometers and you're gonna be much, much happier. But also, I feel like your investment is a lot safer because both the goggles and the radio are compatible with 90% of drones in the market today. And so, if you wanna change drone, you just have to change the drone. The gear you already have is fine and it's one of the best ways to fly, in my opinion. Digital is way better than analog. You see better, you fly better and more confident. That's my opinion. And also, I feel like it's a much safer investment because if you buy it used, you can resell it for the same amount of money you bought it for. And if you lose the drone or break it with DJI Care, which is an insurance you can make, you will pay a little amount of money to get a new drone back from DJI. It's very, very, very compelling, in my opinion. And you're gonna learn how to fly, and once you learn how to do that, you're gonna be able to buy a real FPV drone and then learn beta flight, battery management, repairing, DIY, stuff like that. But you crash a lot less because you already know how to fly. And that's my opinion. If you wanna keep going, you buy other drones. If you decide FPV is not for you, you sell the Avada for the amount of money you bought it for. If you don't wanna spend a lot up front and you just want a taste of FPV, get this one. And that's all for today. Remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. I'm very curious to know what you think about this kit and also what do you think about my suggested ways into FPV. And as always, if you want to buy something, check out the links in the description below. Stay safe and happy flying. Bye!